Now, back to Steiny and Guru on 95.7 The Game. All right, Matt Steiny, it's Dow the Guru Johnson with you on 95.7 The Game. And let's head out uh, to the phone lines and talk to Mike Martz. He was the offensive coordinator for the Rams' greatest show on turf, six-year NFL head coach, and currently he's an NFL analyst for the 33rd team. Mike, thank you so much for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Let me let me ask you this, uh, Mike. Have you noticed a difference in Brock Purdy's play over his first 10, 12 regular season games dating back to last year and then the three that he's lost outside of just the outcome? Well, he didn't lose those games, to be fair. Right. I think he's playing at a very high level. Um, it looked to me like uh, a couple of times there, the receivers, I know, one of those receptions, one of those interceptions, he had two receivers running down the field together. One of them, I think, was supposed to break inside, and I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with him. Uh, I think there's some things. You know, he's a young player; he's going to make those mistakes at times. Uh, I do think there might be a little bit of disconnect with one or two of the receivers there. That's easy to fix; they'll fix that. But he is the real deal. Um, if there's any problems. Just, with him, you know, he's, he's still learning on the job, so to speak, but he's a very talented, uh, I'm all in on Brock Purdy, I promise you. I think he's an outstanding player. Mike, that's it, it, good to hear that because I got to tell you, I had him in Canton already with the first five games and even last year, and I told my partner, it, it's just awkward watching the last three to where, you know, the, the turnovers and the interceptions have happened kind of in money time. So I just want to make sure we got you, I hear you correctly, the last three games haven't affected uh, your viewpoint on Brock moving forward, huh? Oh, not at all. Not at all. Um, those things happen to quarterbacks. You know, I think everybody expected him to be perfect. Well, he's not. You know, Kurt Warner in his first start, the first half, he threw three interceptions. Um, he won the MVP. I mean, it, it, these things will happen. There's a one or two of those throws, I think, that were kind of inopportune. We sprint to the right, and he tried to make that little throw. Just use better judgment, but by and large, one of the things that's very strong for him from the beginning was he has such great judgment. He sees things quickly. He knows where everybody is. He gets. A, he has great anticipation with the football. I think there's two or three times and I broke it down here just for my own uh, benefit. Three throws where I just really felt like the the receiver kind of gave him up, and um, mm. that happens. That's just not being on the same page and. Uh, and it happens all the time. Even guys that have been thrown together for a long time. So, uh, I, I just, this is just an overreaction for this guy. He's, he's a real deal. He's a pretty damn outstanding player. Mike March joining us on 95 7 The Game, six year NFL head coach. You can her- currently hear him as an NFL analyst for the 33rd team. Uh, let, let me let me ask you this about the Niners. And, and just knowing, look, Brock Purdy's quarterback 15 regular season games, a couple playoff games. He is going to be their guy going forward, uh, obviously, this year. How realistic is it that they are going to go all the way? I mean, do you – can they win it all? I know they can win it all with Purdy, but is it is it going to be a little more difficult because, uh, let's say, he's only been the quarterback for a year? Well, everybody's putting these losses on Brock Purdy, and I, I, it's pretty hard to figure out uh, why that is. I mean, we watch the throws that he's made, even in those losses. He's he's played at a really high level for the most part. Um, and this season dumped on him. He had some interceptions, but you know, at the end, he's trying to make a throw to, you know, to win the game. And you just do those things, but there's other problems, you know, they're there that uh, they've got to get resolved. And I'm sure they will. I still think they'll win the Super Bowl personally. Uh, I picked them at the beginning of the season. I think that Shani's a great head coach. Uh, this bye week couldn't come at a better time. They'll get things resolved and fix what's broken more or less. And my favorite player in the league is Fred Warren. I mean, he's a, I've never seen a guy so active in this league. I can't take my eyes off him when I watch him play. So they just got to get guys playing up to a better level around him on defense, too. You know, defensive, you know, you give up back to back 400 yard passing game. That's mm. hard. That's hard to, yeah. that's a hard pill for anybody to swallow when you're the best defense in the league last year. Mike, let me run this by you because a couple years ago, Debo Samuel was the Niner offense. He, he carried them on his back. Last year, I was sitting here telling my partner, oh, my God, maybe he's expendable. You know, they got McCaffrey and Iuke's taking the next step. 
But the one constant is since the Cleveland game, Debo went out early. How big of a luxury and how much does Brock Purdy and the Niner offense miss a guy like Debo Samuel? Any any offense misses Debo Samuel, but uh, Shannon has a great feel for how to use him uh, in multiple ways. And, and in the backfield, out as a wide receiver, they move him around. He makes it very difficult to account for. And then when he does get the ball, he just does some amazing things. So they're very, very uh, methodical in their approach offensively. And they won a lot of games doing that. They're not they're not a come out on first and second, chuck it down the field and get big plays and all that. They don't do that very often. So it fits what they do. They're very, very conscious about moving the chains and keeping the ball and and it works very well. It's a very sound principle. You know, I think they'll continue to do that. And I think that uh, um a couple of the other receivers will step up. I think uh I think one of them I can't shoot, I'm sorry, I can't remember. Juan Jennings? I think he's Jennings, I think, struggled here a little bit. And I think he kind of fooled the quarterback a little bit at times. Mm. I hope I'm not outstepping my bounds on that, but just look like they were on the same page on a couple of the throws. So, and that's easy to fix. That happens. Uh, Mike March joining us on 95 7, the game. Um, let me ask you this because Kyle Shanahan is known for his creativity, uh, his pre snap stuff. And I always, when I look at the, the 49ers when they're healthy and they got Purdy, they got McCaffrey, Kittle. Ayuk and and Debo Samuel, and I almost feel like they have one extra weapon uh, than most teams. What does it do to uh, you know play calling if you don't have one of those guys? Does it change how how Shanahan will call a game? You know, it's a good question. Um, generally, for me, it never did. You know, mm-hmm. we had we were without Marshall and and. Um, uh, uh, Kurt Warner against the Giants one year, and, and we were still able to win them. That's the year the Giants won the Super Bowl. But I, I think it's up to those guys. I mean, those those guys that are back them up are there for a reason. You know, they're there because their starters waiting to have an opportunity. That's how they need to look at that. And when they get their opportunity, they just need to step up. And that's why I've always looked at it. Um, you know, otherwise you need to find somebody else in that role, I guess. But I would I would expect. Uh, you know, it's harder when Debo Savage's out. He's just a unique individual. But, you know, there, there's so many other things to do there with the tight end and the running back and the other, I you know, the other receivers. I don't see it. Now, if you just have one or two of those guys, then, then it can be an issue. But, man, there's still a lot of people that make plays for them. And they got a, they got another guy that can do that starting this Sunday, uh, Mike. His name is Chase Young. Can you share with us your thoughts and what his impact is going to be on this defense? <laughs> uh oh, my gosh! What a what a great one! I think it's awesome. I mean, they just they just surprised me. They they do it. Well, what's the best thing that could happen to the Forty Nineers? Right? Well, they get chased out. <laughs> you know, I mean, they've got they just they do the the best. Lynch just does a, such a great job of personnel, in my opinion. I mean, that's. I can't imagine not having a big impact on defense. I, I can't imagine that that not being the case. Bosa, Hargrave, you got three guys now you got to account for. That's an offensive nightmare. Hey, Mike, let, about Chase Young, why would Washington say bye bye to a kid that young? Uh, usually because of injuries. You know, um, he's had a real history of injuries and not being on the field, and they may have just got frustrated with him. And, and mm. if you're going to pay a guy, you want you want to be healthy and. And sometimes change is good for guys like that. Uh, you, you know, why did we get Marshall Falk from Indianapolis for for second round draft pick? Wow. I don't know. Uh, it's just one man's stones and another man's diamond, I guess. Who knows why that was happened? I think it's a great move, uh, Mike. Let me ask you this: uh, just about what the Forty Nine ers quarterback situation, and maybe maybe what they've stumbled into, whether it's luck or not, I don't know. But they had Jimmy Garoppolo at quarterback, and he was making about 25. And then they drafted Trey Lance, and he's on a rookie deal. Um, Then they move off of Trey Lance, and they have this guy who's a seventh-round pick that they're paying $800,000 to. How is there any way that that could become part of some team's strategy in other words, can we find a quarterback that we don't have to pay forty million dollars to to allow us to load up around him? Is or is that just something that the Niners may have stumbled on and it's a it's an outlier? 
I think it happens all the time, but they're still the Joe Burrows of the world, right? Um, and TJ Shroud, uh, those guys are real. Herbert, I mean, those are bona fide, worth every penny that they get paid kind of guys. Unfortunately, there's you miss more often than you hit, you know. And to your question, you know, Tom Brady, uh, McCurr, you know, Warner's another great mm. example. You know, we had we had Green and and Mark and and those. I've always had quarterbacks that were either late round picks or free agents that went on to be good players. And and I've always believed that guys that get kicked around down there a little bit that are very talented, they have a certain they have a certain toughness to them. They they resolve that gets built up and you just kind of feed on that. But yeah, I think they're out there. Uh, that's why we drafted Fitzpatrick in the seventh round my last year there. I thought he was that kind of guy. Mike, you're the quarterback guru. I couldn't let you go without asking you a random quarterback question. A week ago, a couple weeks ago, Joe Burrow came in here and looked like one of the top tier quarterbacks, and it got me thinking. I want to ask you this: how big of the how big is the gap between Mahomes and Burrow, if there's even a gap? Well, they're just different kind of players, really. Um, they just they just operate differently. The systems that they operate in are a little bit different. I think Mahomes has a lot of latitude with the tight end there, and some of those things, and, and they just morph and change all the time. Burrow's a little bit more regimented. But that performance by Burrow, he's finally healthy. Man. I would have taken every, the first four weeks of the season, I would disregard if I'm preparing for him. Because when he's healthy now, I don't know if anybody's better than that. Uh, he might be an equal with Mahomes, but the way he's playing right now, the, the 49ers, unfortunately, get a perfect storm. Right. You know, had they, had, had they got him three weeks before that, it would have been different. And and now um, I can't remember who they have this week, but they're just they're just now catching their win and getting going. And yeah, that's Buffalo. A scary team yeah. to play right now. Yeah, they're 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 a scary scary football team to play. Yeah, twenty eight and twenty eight for thirty two against the uh, Niners a yeah. week after Kirk Cousins went thirty five of forty five. Uh, hey, Mike, thank you so much Appreciate for joining it. us. Great stuff as always, and uh, we always look forward to talking to you. Thanks for having me, guys. Appreciate it. All right, Mike Martz, uh, currently an NFL analyst for the 33rd team.